Hello, I'm Eric Hanscom. I'd like to talk to you a little bit right now about prior art searches. Now, before any inventor spends money on a patent application, my advice is that he or she does a prior art search. To begin the prior art search, my advice is you start by doing one yourself. So we're going to look <coughs> at a fairly simple and easy way and free way that uh, you, the inventor, can do your own prior art search. At the end of doing the prior art search on your own, my advice is you turn the results over to a professional prior art search company and they will then follow through and do a professional search utilizing what you've found already. These are things you should do before you spend money on a patent application. I've pulled up three of the most commonly used uh, patent searching um, search engines here. The first is Google Patents and so let's say for example that your invention is something to keep a predator like a great blue heron or a raccoon away from a koi pond. Uh, you just get on Google Patents and you type in koi pond and sure enough you get a number of patents that relate to koi pond. They have koi pond in the title here and the first is a motion responsive koi pond predator deterrent. So when you click on that <clears throat> it takes a while to load but when you click on it it'll show you the patent and you can read through it and see A is this a patent that could prevent you from making the product. In other words, do you infringe this patent? And B, if you don't infringe the patent, is there a chance that you can get a patent uh, over this device because either A, under 35 U.S.C. 102, it's not the same invention, or B, under 35 U.S.C. 103, it's not simply an obvious improvement over it. Okay, so right here it, it opens up, <clears throat> and we look at it, and you can see that um, here's the title, and we scroll through and you can actually see um, the description of the invention and everything you'd ever want to know about predators being kept away from koi ponds. Toward the end of it you get to the actual claims and, and as you know or should know uh, the claims are the most important part of a patent. So after you've looked at this you can actually click on the title page here and you can see that this patent was actually written by a koi pond owner that um, happens to be sitting in this seat. And we can go back and we can look at another one here. So the second one with koi pond in it is a floating plant protector. Well, plant protector really isn't that close to a predator, but maybe we'd get some ideas from what other people have done here and see again whether this is something where we might have to keep away from this particular patent. We've got some kind of interesting drawings. <clears throat> Looks like it's uh, it's almost a conically shaped uh, wire that has uh, the plants on the surface. And we also notice with this one, this is a design patent. The previous one was a utility patent that protected how the item worked. This is a design patent. It protects how the item looks. So usually you're not quite as worried about design patents as you are with utility patents. So anyway, we scroll through here and look at the pictures and you can see from this whether or not your invention is too close for comfort to this particular one. So that's Google Patents. We can also look on Free Patents Online. This is another one of the, the search engines that's out there. And again, we type in Koi Pond, and let's see what we find. Okay, well, here is the actual patent that was granted. The utility patent, here is the published patent application, and here is that design patent we found earlier. So again, in this case, anyway, free patents online and Google patents found the very same patents, which is good. And you can kind of scroll down and you notice that we're getting further and further away from, from uh, predator-related uh, patent applications. We've got skimmers, we've got a fish pond feeding indicator, but you can look at these if you want to. Uh, the last uh, free search engine that I like to use is Patent Storm. This is, again, is fairly easy to, to use, so we type in Koi Pond. And let's see if we find the same patents again. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like it. So anyway, here we've got, this is the patent number for the utility patent. Here's the published patent application. Here is the design patent. Now, from our, our previous videos, you know that whether it's an issued patent or a published patent application, whether it's a utility patent or whether it's a design patent, all of these are valid prior art against your rights to either perhaps 
make the invention, or B, get a patent on it. And so you need to go through these, look at the patents, look at the published patent applications, see what's out there. If at the end of going through this process you still think that there's hope that you can either, under 35 U.S.C. 102, not have an invention that has already been patented by somebody else or has a published patent application uh, that's, that's going to shoot you down, or B, under 35 U.S.C. 103, where your invention is not just an obvious improvement over somebody else's patent or published patent application. If you think uh, that there still is hope that you might get a patent, my advice is to turn this issue over to a professional prior art searching company. There are a couple of good ones out there. And have them do the search. The, pr the search is probably going to cost you under $600 uh, for a simple mechanical product such as this. And it's well worth spending the money at the beginning because the actual patent application usually dwarfs the prior art search in terms of cost. So uh, find what you can find. Then my advice is turn over the results to a professional prior art searching company. See what they come back with. And after you see what they found, then you can make a, a well-informed business decision about whether it's a good idea to proceed with a patent application.